get a lot of sketchy guys that come in here. So I kind of like kicked myself towards the alarm. So we do have panic devices in all the rooms. Things get out of hand. The lady knows exactly where that panic device is. Does your mom know you work at a brothel? No, they're Mormon, so I'm nervous. So what about this video? All the ladies park in a private area for safety. If there's a stalker involved, they don't know what car she's driving to. B1 is the most haunted room. They've woken up to see girls doing their makeup in the mirror <gasps> that aren't there. They'll hear footsteps walking down this hallway. What the f*** is going on? When you know something is off, something probably is off. So that's our cooking, or chefs back here. I don't know if they want to be filmed. Okay. But we can kind of be I'll, here. I'll cheat it so they don't see them, yeah. This is where he works really hard for the customers and the girls. So nice to meet you. Here. And so no customers beyond this point. This is where the ladies seek and press, work out in the gym, have their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's computers back there for them. I also have a massage therapist that comes out for them. Damn. And nail tech, an eyelash lady. And Jenny O hair and makeup, and wow. so they can take a day off and schedule all their services here, or they can go into town and we'll have a spa day. Come back to Seeing more of the behind the scenes of the brothel and where the ladies hang out when not technically working, I was hungry to sit down with my first lady to see what life was truly like for her. Singing sound. Thank you, Bella, for taking the time to talk with me. What was your first instinct to be like, I'm gonna go to apply at the Raffles? I don't know. I was a hotel director for six years before this, but I lost 80 pounds. I broke up with my partner of five years, quit that job of six years, and just decided to apply. I wanted to have my little hoe phase again. I just love sex and figured if I'm good at it, I should make a career out of it. You came here and walked through the front doors, or how did you- It was a weirdly normal application process. You apply online, and then you have a phone interview right afterward, and then you have the interview in person, and just start having sex from there. Do you remember your first experience with your first client? Yes. I had a big sister, which is basically one of the ladies that's been here for a while. She kind of is your training buddy and helps you through things. She did the negotiation with me, um, which is where we go into a little room and we talk pricing with the client, what they want to do with us. And so he was a little nervous that there were these two ladies coming at him at once. He felt a little interrogated, I think, so it was nerve-wracking, I think, for all of us. But we got to an agreement by the end of it, and that was it. Were you nervous for, like, the experience of it? Like, the first no. time having sex is work? I've been doing it forever, so... Having I, sex? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've been having sex for a while, so... So why not make money doing it? Exactly, yeah. And it's weirdly normal. You kind of talk in the bar for a little bit with the guys, so you get to know each other. It's really like meeting a girl in a bar and then just fucking on the first date. So this is one of her fetish suites. Woo! This is our domination suite. Oh my gosh. It's... These are all my old toys that I donated to the ladies. They're usually all hung up. I love it. Tell them they can use it, just wipe it off and put it back. Yes. And again, they are, there is panic devices all throughout this room. The ladies know where it's at. How often is this room used? Is this room used a lot? Usually every day. So this is a popular room? It's a very popular room. And do all women like, are they all down for this, or some of them not no. down for this? And so, like, some of our ladies are not into other ladies, or into couples, or into fetishes. But if she's picked, then she knows to say, come grab me or the office, and grab a lady that is specifically into this type of party, and knows what she's doing, especially for safety. If she wants to learn, what I tell her is, grab that seasoned lady, have her pull you in, so she can teach you. And that way you can understand how to run this type of party, in a safe manner, too. How and this cool. is a sex machine. It's used all, everything is done with a condom as well. Mm -hmm. But that is a sex machine right there. Does your mom know you work at a brothel? No, I haven't told my family yet. They're Mormon, so I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't think they'll like it. So what about this video? I'm kind of down at this point. I, I mean, I've been here for a year now. I just got photos done where it shows my face, so those are online now. I'm just kind of ready to see the reaction. I've sort of alluded to it with my sister so far, and I basically said, I'm not ready to talk about it yet, but just know that I'm safe and I'm happy and I'm doing well. And she was really receptive to that. I just, almost like coming out, I'm nervous to tell them in person from me directly. What do they think your job is right now? They think I am a graphic designer for a medical consultant. 
<laughs> oh, this is fully thought out. Yeah. I'm obsessed. Wait, so wait, when you so describe, look, I'm your mom, and you're uh-huh. you now. Tell me about your job. I work in Sacramento at a hospital. Um, I do graphic design for this medical consultant who basically provides all of the training material for the nurses and doctors who work there. So they're always watching PowerPoint presentations, getting Impressive. all this training. Yeah, so I basically create those PowerPoints and uh, have to scour through medical material and learn it and uh, turn it into training material. Wait, this is like so impressive. I literally believed you. So wait, what room is this considered? This was the original parlor. This was the original bar. Guys would be hanging out with ladies all around the walls here at the bar. This is like honestly even nicer than the other bar, I think. Right? I love the stripper pole too. It's It's one of the tallest in the US. It's gorgeous. This is supposedly the most haunted. B1 is the most haunted room. Uh, when girls have stayed in here, they've woken up to see girls doing their makeup in the mirror <gasps> that aren't there. They'll hear footsteps walking down this hallway. One person heard gum being blown at night, just like popping. Did girls die here? One didn't die here, but she was really, um, she loved this place. She worked here for a long time. Her name was Love. There are pictures of her in Madame Tara's office. Um, her room across the street still has all of her decorations. It says love on the outside of the door. Oh but we think she's still here because she loved this place so much. So this is actually B1, this dark room here. Oh my gosh. It smells a little different. It does. It has a different energy in it too. That's right. Oh my gosh. It's simple, but if you stay here at night, it's weird. Wow. So, but this is not a room because it's just a couch, right? Yeah, I guess back in the day they used to both be rooms and the ladies had to share this connecting bathroom. Mm. And now we all have our own individual rooms across the street, which is way better. Um, Yeah, I can't imagine what that was like, especially if you have to have a guy who has to go pee at the same time as her guy. There's so many empty rooms here. Mm -hmm. Why don't they use them? Um, I think it closed down right before COVID, so we didn't have the business to keep both sides of the property open, so we just keep that other side open, Um, but I'm hoping if it gets busier again, we can open this back up, because... So at one time, all of these rooms were filled? Yeah. With girls? Oh, yeah. Wow. That'd be like 100 100 females. Right? They talk about it, too. There used to be, like, both sides of the brothel, and this was the party house, where all the girls that were a little rowdy would kind of be here, dancing on the pole all the time. Sounds fun. Right? right? I know. But the problem would be if if there's 100 girls, then there's even more competition, because there's not 100 more guys coming in. I know you're probably going to say no, but, like, (laughs) is there tension between the girls in terms of, like, one girl's always getting all the clients or one girl's never getting the client. How is there not tension? I don't know. I think we're all just having a great time, constantly orgasming, making great money. There's really nothing to be tense about. Some girls will say like, oh yeah, we get a lot of the same clients, but it's never bitter. It's always like, hey, let's try to get them together. You know, let's show them a really good three-way time. Do you talk about your prices with the other ladies? Like, do they know how much you're charging a guy? Typically, no, but I think you kind of figure it out sometimes with a lot of the guys. Uh, They'll just be honest about what the girls have talked to them about. Or beforehand, if we're going to have a two-girl party, a three-girl party, we'll kind of decide what we're comfortable taking. So one girl could cost more than the other girl? Could be, yeah. Um, A lot of the times, in my experience, it's kind of, we'll let the guy name a price and... If we like that, if we can take half, then that's fine. We'll split it two ways. Or sometimes we'll, you know, make our own prices. So all the ladies park in a private area for safety. And so that way nobody knows what kind of car they're driving and there's nobody following anybody. Or if there's a stalker involved, they don't know what car she's driving to. Smart. Yes. And so this room is our VIP lineup area. So if we get somebody famous out here, we get a couple that's from the Reno area. They don't want to be out where the general public is. They can call ahead. We'll buzz them through a different gate and give them a private line so they don't have to be seen by the general public in the bar. So then the girls walk right here. Yep, the customer stays here, the girls line up there, and then they come right here one at a time. How many lineups do you do a day? Sometimes there's none. Sometimes there's seven, eight. Do you like lineups? I do like lineups. Some girls are like, oh, it's because you get picked. And I'm like, ah, but it's, it's fun. I'm so happy whenever anyone gets picked. During the day, how many guys come through here? Quite a lot. I'd say like at least a hundred. Um, really? Yeah, all through the day, the night, 
We're open 24 seven, so they're coming whenever. So when I went through the bar, I couldn't film it, but there was like, I think two guys. Mm -hmm. And there was like six girls. Mm -hmm. I noticed that like when I was there, the girls were kind of sticking to their own. Mm -hmm. And then the guys were over here. But I would think the girls should come over them like, hey, how are you? They might have already, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, they kind of like to mingle right when the guys come in. Mm -hmm. um, and then let the guys maybe eat some food first, you know, kind of chill. I like to go up to the guys for sure, ask if they want a tour of the whole place. I had heard Bella bring up coming out to her family and was curious to talk with her about her queerness. I'd say like 98% gay. So how does that- That's super gay. Yes, <laughs> yes, gay. yes. How does that work with your job? That's where I kind of get my fulfillment with, you know, wanting a dick occasionally. And then in my personal life, I'm just obsessed with women and uh, try to date them as much as possible. Oh my gosh, this is like a goldmine <laughs> to have you on my series because my series is all about, you know, queer people. Yeah. And to have you in a predominantly straight business, mm -hmm. but still satisfied and then gay in your normal life. That's just fascinating. I love it. And you'd find most of us who work here are somewhere in the queer community. One of the girls said I'm probably the gayest one here, and I probably am. Do you ever have females come in? Yeah, a lot of times it's couples. Um, sometimes it'll be some like girlfriends who just want to kind of see what it's all about. But I love doing that, too. They always tell me, like, hey, Bella, there's a couple. And I'm like, I'm on it. And I fucking sprint to them to the bar. Want to show them a good time. I'm sure you're a hit because you're so pretty. You're very nice. You just seem like a very wholesome person. I can imagine guys and women like fall in love with you very easily. Oh, thank you. I hope so. I'm trying. Do you find dating outside hard with the job that you have? Women are weirdly more receptive than men are. A lot of women are way more okay with it. I feel like I would be if I dated someone in this industry. Do you ever like find yourself sexually attracted to the women that work here? 100%. Have you seen the women who work here? Oh yeah, they're God. hot. Oh yeah. yeah. A lot of the customers too who come in, like that's where I remind myself like, oh yeah, I'm not fully gay because some of these guys are cute. And then the women, we can party together with a client. So that can be really fun sometimes getting a good mix of men and women in there. But you can't just hook up with each other, right? Right, yeah, no. They don't want any sort of camaraderie that turns into cattiness or favoritism happening. Um, we nip that in the bud before it ever happens. Have you ever told the guy your real name? No, I give them a fake real name. You're like, they, okay, you're like, my name's not like, Bella, it's actually Lauren. Yeah, fine, it's Sarah. Oh, <laughs> smart. Yeah. Because you don't want them to find you on Instagram or what? Is that the reason? Yeah, just it's nice to be as safe as possible. If they want my address, I'll give them a P.O. box, not a physical address. If they want to send me stuff, or I'll give them this address here. Don't give them my real name. Um, I'll lie and tell them I live somewhere else. They'll ask where I live. I'll say Oregon, but I'm here, you know, so it's, yeah, I try to just be safe. Have you ever ran into a guy like on the streets that you have had at the brothel? Not yet. I don't know what I'm going to do when that happens. Has that, have you heard of that happening? Before? Oh yeah. One of the girls just had that happen where he was like, Hey, Hey, and she just kept walking. Didn't know what to do. Do you feel like really safe when you're here? Absolutely. We have 24 seven security at any time we feel unsafe. There are hidden alarms everywhere and we can trigger it and security will be there less than 30 seconds. So it's kind of jarring to go to a bar by myself mm. out in Reno and uh, know that I don't have backup with me. Do you get a lot of like sketchy guys that come in here and act a certain type of way that make you feel unsafe? Not as many as I would expect to. I've had experiences where I just can feel that I'm probably gonna have to pull the alarm at some point and then it's happened. So now I'm like, okay, if, if I'm gonna take this guy I'm gonna bump the price. And usually they'll say no. It's sort of a way to have them reject you. <laughs> what would be like a thing that make you feel like, okay, the hero, I'm gonna have to pull the alarm? If we've agreed no anal, for example, and he keeps trying to do it, when I say no, then that's a problem. If the time's up and he tries to keep going without wanting to rebook and follow that process, then that's an issue. Uh, I think the worst that's happened to me was a guy held me down when the party was over and that was really scary. So I kind of like kicked myself towards the alarm and security was right there, got him off, shuffled him out naked outside and uh, this guy was so drunk out of his mind. It's like a lesson in trusting your gut, which you can carry that anywhere in life. It's like when you know something's off, something probably is off. Yeah, and I'm super awesome at just ignoring red flags all over the place in life. So I'm getting better at that here. My time with Bella had come to an end, but this was just day one of my time at Mustang Ranch. My time was really just beginning. 
Next week, we will meet Dosse, spend time in the brothel's hair salon, and take a tour of the VIP rooms. It makes my skin crawl and my voice shakes. It is one of my favorite episodes of my time at Mustang Ranch. I hope you're subscribed, and I will see you next week. Thank you.